What's up, everybody? We are live here on the pilot episode, I guess, of of Crimson Cast Live for a game as we are getting ready to watch this Indiana Moorhead State game. Thanks to those of you who have joined. Obviously, the game hasn't started yet, but it's going to start here soon. So we're just going to sit here and chat a little bit as we go into this game. We had a lot to talk about. I don't know if I'm going to have any guests with me. This was originally an idea that I had talked about with our friend Tony Adrania for the Michigan game. We decided not to do it that day because I was like, you know, everybody's going to be on Peacock. All the streaming is going to be at a different times. People might get angry. Uh, and that would have been a great game to do it for. And Tony is now at the game. He took his family to the game. He's being a good family man. I am going to do this by myself unless someone jumps on with me later. So anyway, it's good to have you folks joining us. We got a lot to talk about. And we've got Indiana basketball that we're going to talk about. we got IU football to talk about. And, in fact, we're going to use that to kind of talk here because we've got about a minute and a half left until tip, according to the BTN countdown clock. Uh, so instead of watching Davis uh, uh, on BTN, we'll just talk about this. Big news for IU. They secure a verbal commitment from a four-star in-state quarterback uh, somewhere between 15th and 20th in the nation. Uh, a guy named Tyler Cherry from Center Grove. Some of you might know Tyler um, or, or have watched him play before. we got a run on Center Grove quarterbacks, it seems like. Uh, you got Taven Jackson in the room, and now you got Tyler Cherry that's going to come in. This looks like a really top-level prospect, and it is amazing to me how much work this staff has done so quickly. Not just to get transfers in. They've got like seven transfers. We'll talk about some of them later on. Uh, but to to get a player like Tyler Cherry, who was committed to Duke, wasn't going to Indiana. I don't know if he'd been offered by Indiana. He might have at some point, but clearly wasn't taking that seriously. Uh, Kurt Signetti and his staff get here. He decommits from Duke, probably because he saw Manny Diaz was going to go be the head coach at Duke. Uh, and uh, IU beats out Michigan State for his services, which is amazing. Uh, that's a big recruiting win. We've talked many times on the show about how if you can beat Michigan State for recruits, that's that's your competition if you're Indiana. Like You're not going to beat the Ohio States, the Michigans, the Penn States. You, you could, if you can beat the Michigan States, you're, you're making some progress. And that's what I like to see. Anyway, a lot to talk about with that, but congrats to Kurt Signetti and his staff uh, Tino Sinceri, Mike Shanahan, the whole offensive staff. And congrats to Tyler Cherry. Welcome to Hoosier Nation. We're excited to have you. All right. Looks like we're getting ready to start this game as Trey Galloway, a great game against Kansas. Uh, best game that I think Trey's ever played in uniform. And, and a hat tip to uh, Jared Morris from Assembly Call for calling that properly. I was a little skeptical when he sent that out pregame, but uh, he absolutely was right. Uh, and there you go. Trey ends up controlling off the tip, and I guess we're going to be underway. So what I'd like to do here, if you've got comments, leave them on Twitter, leave them on uh, YouTube. I'll add some of them to the mix. I can't add all of them, obviously. And Mackenzie missing a three to start with there. But um, we'll uh, we'll just try to kind of talk about what's going on in the game. And I don't know exactly how synced up you folks are with what I'm on. I'm on YouTube TV, so I might be a little behind some of you. Uh, but IU obviously needing to get a good start defensively, and that's not that's not the way to do it. D don't give up a three to start the game, uh, but they, they absolutely did it there. Uh, so 37% three-point shooting percentage for Moorhead State, not ideal, but they'll pick up a foul there earlier. Luke Satchwell joining us. Hi, Luke. Not going to be able to join us for this, but will for future games. I will try to do these more. If you folks like this, I would love to – this actually, it makes me behave during games. One of the things my kids laugh at me about is I, I, I'm i a little excitable during these games, so I'm, I'm happy to come on here and talk about the game because it does keep me more or less in the pocket of like a normal human being when I'm watching these games. Um, missed shot, but a foul there uh, for Mbako. It's, I, I like the aggressiveness that we're seeing Mbako play with now. He seems a lot more – uh, confident with what he's doing out there on the court. Uh, Matt Simon says the sync is perfect. Uh, he's on Hulu. So I'm hoping the sync for the rest of you is perfect as well. If, it, if it's too far off, I'm sorry. 
Uh, this is brand new technology. We're not sure exactly how all this is going to work out. But um, one of the things that's been interesting, I, we've, we've talked about this a little bit over the course of uh, the last couple of of Crimson Cast main episodes, I think, is is how this team's defense is, to me, the glaring weakness with them right now. And, and ironically, they had a really good defensive game against Kansas. Uh, okay, Coach Tonsoni just said he paused for four seconds, and now we're synced up. So you might want to play around with that a little bit if you want to keep in line with what I'm looking at here. I'm not going to touch my television. I'm just going to kind of let this roll. The thing with this Moorhead State team that I think is interesting, you, you look at what they've done so far this season. That hey, they, wow, somebody missed a three against Indiana. That's that's amazing, right there. Hey, um, nice move by Malik. That's no, nope, they're going to stay on the floor. All right. Um, the thing, the, so one of the things about IU's defense that I've been really, uh, I talked about it on assembly call last week when I was on with Coach and and Andy. I think what's been disappointing to me about IU's defense, and it's been kind of a disappointment through most of the last couple of years, is how IU doesn't seem to force a lot of turnovers. That they really that does not seem to be a main aspect of what they want to do defensively. Uh, they're you know they're they're 248th in the country this year in turnovers forced, and you know if you look at it not on a on a number of turnovers perspective, but on a how many, like what percentage of the other team's uh, possessions end in a turnover? It's a really good metric overall of like how much ball pressure, uh, you know, how how well are you doing with steals? Ah, couldn't get the into the board there. Got to got to put that one home. Um, but Indiana, I think, really needs to do a better job of pressuring a team like Moorhead State, especially who's real bad in turnovers. They're one of the worst teams in the country. In turnovers, uh, they turn the ball over on 22.5% of possessions. And I think Indiana's really got an opportunity here because, because you know, Moorhead State both doesn't turn the opponent over and also gets themselves turned over quite a bit. That's kind of their big weakness here. Yeah, and Baco just forced something there. That's That's not, that's not ideal. See, this is one of the problems I think that we see with this IU team so tight early if if their initial shot attempts don't fall. And we saw this, I think, in the Army game. We saw it in the Harvard game, at least in the first half, where they, they just get in their own heads so much. And it's almost like there's so much pressure on this team to go out and perform that they they just tighten up in a way that ends up not working. That's some pretty good defense there. So. Let's see. Okay, that's a nice, nice positioning from Malik. That's a bad pass, though. I, so, as much as I've praised Malik this season about being one of the best passing big men in the conference, that's just not going to get it done. McKenzie, what are you doing there? Oh, I can't. You can't let a guy that small just drive by you like that. Um, obviously, we're we're still waiting for McKenzie to get a little bit more on the ball in terms of where the defense is and, and where he's supposed to be. He's been better, I think, the last couple of games. But that's not going to get it done. Okay, miss basket there. All right, Indiana needs to score. They can't go into this under 16 with only two points. Come on. Okay, that, wow. All every possible aspect of the pivot. Um, but nice job there. It's interesting. So Quang is saying that we're a minute or two ahead on YouTube TV. I'm watching on YouTube TV. So I'm not sure what to tell you about that. That's that's really interesting. But Hulu seems to be synced. Uh all right. So good good job by Malik. This this Moorhead State team is not tall except for number 23, uh, which is that's Deontay Miles. Um it looks like if you haven't looked at their um, at their statistics, you know they're they're actually a pretty efficient team, uh, at least in terms of individual starters offensively. That's that's not going to get it done, man. Dude, this is, I think, part of the issue, and and this was something that Jared raised uh, raised in in the Discord conversation earlier. Okay, we're going to go to the break here, seven to four. 
So right now it's 1557. Okay, we just stopped, I think. So we're a couple of seconds unsynced. We're close enough, I think. Uh, we just went to break for the YouTube. So, you know, part of the problem Indiana is going to have here, and, you know, Jamie actually uh, met, met uh, said this earlier, that he actually bet on Moorhead because um, 97% of the draft money was on Moorhead, which I don't blame. I mean, it's you've got a bunch of different things going on here for IU. They just had a, 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 a basically a huge emotional letdown at the end of that Kansas game. It's we're past finals week. There's nobody on campus. Um, you know, Moorhead isn't, they're not great, but they're not, um, they're not a complete dead fish when it comes to how they've been playing. They, they just got a huge win at home against St. Mary of the woods. They beat St. Mary of the woods, one Oh two to 33. So I think betting in favor of, of Moorhead was probably a good move by, by you. Um, Ethan Barksdale mentions here, I wish they ran some more stuff with Ware on the perimeter. The paint's just clogged and Ware's been timid on offense. It's interesting because I, I didn't think Ware looked that timid on offense against uh, against Kansas. He just didn't get shots to fall. I think part of the problem with Ware is he's just, he's a big guy, but he's not a physical guy. And, you know, he he's really more of a finesse player, which I think that's what's going to make him a really attractive draft prospect. But it's tough because, you know, in the Big Ten, you don't see a lot of players like that having just a huge amount of success. And I think when you play a team like Kansas with a guy like Hunter Dickinson, former Big Ten center, it's hard for that type of a player to play physically in that kind of a game. And, you know, the, those players tend to feel like they get better shots if they're not drawing contact. Um, and I think, you know, as, as Quang just noted, where needed to power through versus Kansas. Absolutely. But I just don't think it's in his nature. And I would say, and, and actually Royville Ballers brings up a good point. They have to develop better passing lanes out of a post feed that gets stable. They also need to figure out better passing lanes into the post. I think part of the problem, you know, so much of the offense feels ponderous at times and it annoys a bunch of people, myself included, because it just feels like it takes so long to get things set up, despite the fact that Indiana, uh, you know, on average has faster possessions than they had last year, but it still feels like, um, you know, renew takes a while to get into the action that slows everything down. It allows the opposing defense to get into position. All right. Free throw. Good. So early eight, four deficit. It's, it's funny. We, a bunch of people talked about the, the need to blow out Moorhead State. And, and you know, look, I think ultimately Indiana is likely to struggle with metrics for the entire year. But, uh, you know, one of the ways I shot, good job, Trey. That's good. That's a good start that uh, Trey Galloway just had there. Get that floater up. Um, get that basket to go. That's that's good. So, but, what you know, what I was going to say was, you know, get it, winning by large margins helps your metrics because ultimately Ken Palm, Torvik, all of those, even the net, they do reward you for margin of victory because really what it's doing is measuring like, what did you, that three almost went in. She's got not. So, okay, I got to come back to this in a second. Another three doesn't drop. That's good. Um, remind me, somebody remind me to come back to the rebounding point. Uh, but I wanted to finish talking about the, the issues with the the margin of victory or loss. Like Indiana, the reason their metrics are so bad is because they've played bad teams or not not good teams at least, and they haven't won by as many points as they should. And you look around the country, and a lot of the teams that are in the top 30, that looked like a travel that <laughs> didn't get called. IU's going to keep that. Um, but you look at IU compared to the the Alabamas or the Iowa States or whatever, and those teams are blowing out teams that are in the same general vicinity of the teams Indiana's playing and Indiana's not blowing them out. I mean, this Moorhead state team, you have to look at it. That's a nice inbound play. Yeah. Trey's got to hit that nice rebound, Caleb. Okay, good. I thought Caleb banks probably looks back at that Kansas game and is like, man, I could have done more there uh, offensively, but that's, that's nice to be Johnny on the spot there with the offensive rebound. All right, so tie game. Okay, that's good. That ball's knocked out of bounds. That'll be Indiana ball. Good. Uh, so, like, this Moorhead State team's a good example. Moorhead State 
has lost so far to Alabama, 105 to 73. And they lost to Purdue, 87 to 57. So that's a that's a that's two 30 point losses. And Indiana, you know, if they beat it, if they beat Morehead State by 30, now they start to get looked at by the metrics, by the computers. It's not like individuals looking at them, but they get looked at in the metrics, and it's like the metrics say, Oh, this Indiana team's pretty good. They were able to really overwhelm that opponent. And I don't know if they've actually got that in them. So we'll have to see. All right, another foul here. And Moorhead already with four fouls. And and I think all of them have been legitimate thus far. Yeah, see, that's the problem. If you see that stat, 68 points from the starters, only three off the bench. Um, that was, you know, I mean, there were a lot of reasons why Indiana ultimately ended up not winning at the end, but getting so little bench production. We talked about that on Crimson Cast. Not another foul there. Yeah, Morehead State. This is interesting. I'm I'm actually surprised um, that they're they're fouling at the degree that they're fouling right now. This this was not something I initially anticipated. Um, Morehead State on the season. Yeah, they're you know they've got a couple of players that foul quite a bit, but this is definitely at a rate higher than uh, than we've seen. Um, yes, <laughs> doctor, I'm not going to put this on nice. That's nice. That is, that is good right there. Um, but yeah, that was accurate. I, you got almost no bench scoring at all. Look at that. That's a nice, see, that's that this is one of the things that Mike Woodson, I think doesn't get enough credit for sometimes is how good his out of bounds plays are. CW saying, I'm looking forward to the refs evening it out. It's funny, but it's true. Uh, good friend of mine, Dr. David Pierce, who teaches at IP or uh, I, IU Indianapolis, not not IUPUI now, but he did a study like 20 years ago where he looked at referees and foul calls, and there was like a, a statistically significant uh, like measure where it showed that the 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 greater the foul discrepancy, the more likely that the next foul was going to get called on the opposition. Nice job by Anthony Walker; they're hitting that shot. That's uh, that's going to be huge. If Walker, if Walker or Banks or Gun, I mean, I guess Gun may be injured right now, but if they can they can score, I mean, that's really what Indiana felt like they were missing at times against Kansas. They just relied so much on Galloway. All right, nice rebound by Ware. That pass could have been better, but nice nice pass, Trey. Uh, Gabe Cups. I. I, I just cups has done so many things. Well, he's just, he's got to shoot. He's got to start hitting shots. I mean, as much as I like him out there, he just has, he has to hit, he has to score. He just, he there's, you can't have a, a point guard, not scoring. Okay. That's a good job by Trey. That was, that was a real nice head up play there. And he's going to get rewarded here with the, that's nice. Oh, Trey. No, no buddy. No. Uh, that probably could have been a foul and yeah, a kick out. Man, how many how many threes has Moorhead State shot already? God, that's a uh, should have been a block. Um, well, that's been kind of the story for Trey Galloway most of the season. He he gets himself in good position and he he can't convert uh, the shots. He obviously did against Kansas. Um, that's another nice play by Walker. Yeah, wow. Okay, we got good Anthony Walker in this one. Uh, this is this is going to be helpful. Let me get the live stats up here. Um, and track some some things. Yeah, that's that's a clear foul. All right, let me let's get the uh, the stat feed going. Yeah, Walker's been real impressive. He's he's not there every night, but when he's there, he's really there. Wow, three <laughs> three fouls on George Marshall. Um, how bad is that going to be? So George Marshall, the guy that just drew that third foul, uh, has not played very much this year. It's weird that he's out there, period. I, I don't know if there was an injury uh, or something, but he came into this game only having played in 9% of his team's minutes. Thank you, by the way, for those of you who have tuned in. We've got about 70 people watching right now. Uh, send this to your friends if you'd, if you'd like to have them join along. I like the conversation we got going on here. Okay, there's a three. Jordan Lathan, I mean, he's a 41% three-point shooter on the season. So I guess don't be shocked if he hits those. 
Okay, Gunn is in the game, so I guess he wasn't actually that injured. All right, what happens? Nice pass out by Ware. Oh, that's a okay. Nice that okay. That was a nice, nice heads up cut by Anthony Walker to get himself down into position and make that pass easy. It is. It is absolutely crazy. I agree. Uh, beast on the diamond. The the just the the wild threes uh, that that seem to go in for other teams. Although right now, Moorhead Stead's only, they're two for nine from three right now. Walker, ah, should have just gone straight up with that. Although it would have been a tough angle. All right, what do we got? All right, cups, that's a good job there. See, I, I mean, what worries me, I, I, there's just there's something okay, foul going to be called here on Moorhead State, so that's going to take us to the timeout. Um, someone asked, "Is this the game Gun gets going?" Um, I, I we'll talk about Gun a little bit later. Griffin, yes, Griffin. We needed we needed a respite from all of the success right this week, so we've got to instead we got to struggle here against Moorhead State in basketball. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's look at some stats while we're at break. Matt Hoosier, four zero turnovers allowed six offensive rebounds. This is what I wanted to talk about earlier is the rebounding situation, uh, which is, you know, a part of the issue for Indiana is, you know, you can have two big men and play them. It's not, it's not the most efficient style of doing things, but it can be done, but you can't have two big men who don't rebound really well. And I feel like Indiana, Renew is almost stationed too far away from the basket half the time. And Ware isn't a banger, so he's not liable to go in and, and grab the the number of rebounds that you would hope that he would get. And so you end up with a game like this where Moorhead State, who, I mean, you know, with, with all due respect, they're, they're, they're a pretty good offensive rebounding team, but you, you should be able to keep them off the glass. But they've grabbed six offensive rebounds already. Um, I mean, Indiana's kind of lucky in this game so far that Moorhead State's fouled as often as they have, and also that Moorhead State's only shooting six for 21 uh, so far in this game. But um, Bryce mentions, can we just not make me feel nervous every game? I agree. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what to do or what to say about the rebounding for Indiana. This is something that we've talked about a bit. Indiana, so far this season, is only getting offensive rebounds on 26.7% of possessions, which is 261st in the country. That's bad. Um, and then they're only, they're like opponents are getting offensive rebounds on 29.4% of possessions, which is not ideal. Uh, that's, that's, that's not going to get the job done. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. But for Indiana to play this many big people in the paint, Renew where, you know, Sparks has played quite a bit. You know, Caleb Banks isn't huge, but has leaping ability. Anthony Walker could play down there. For them to be this nonchalant on the glass feels almost like it's on purpose. You know, as if Indiana's being told, okay, let's not worry about offensive rebounds as much. Let's worry about getting into transition defense, which, you know, I, I feel like, in games like this, I don't know that you need to worry about that that much. I don't think Moorhead State's liable to run on you. Um, and I just, I would like to see them focus a little bit more on that. I mean, Dr. Hoosier mentions that uh, teams shoot a lot of threes against IU, which are long rebounds, which negates the size advantage. I mean, yeah, th that is true in the, in the micro, although... Honestly, it feels like a lot of the offensive rebounds that, uh, that opponents are getting are not coming off of threes, but are instead coming off of, of missed twos. At least that's what it's felt like to me. Uh, however, I don't have Synergy in front of me. I need to get Tony and his uh, Synergy account to look that up. So you may be right, uh, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, are you getting 10 points off the bench so far? Um, is this a game that Cups should throw up several shots? I I, I don't – look, I, I don't know that that's the case. Yeah, Ware missed another free throw. Um that was the big thing that was frustrating about that Kansas game was there were a couple of 
front ends of one and ones that Indiana missed that looked like they might have made a bit of a difference in that game. Uh, there's a long three. See, that wasn't a long rebound per se. I just think Banks got outfought for that rebound. He didn't have good position there. Um, part of it, I just we're we're this team doesn't doesn't block out particularly where well. Um guard rebounding when where goes for blocks may be the reason. That might be that might be part of the issue as well. I agree. Um three by banks. Ooh, that was ugly. All right, what's more head gonna do here? I got an idea. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That that that's that's that sounds about right. Well, Morehead's only hit three threes on the game, but that's as many as Indiana's attempted so far in the game, which is is not ideal. All right. Now, Walker's the only one initiating anything. That's a nice job by Banks there. That's a nice job getting on that rebound. Um, seems we do a lot of watching on rebounds instead of blocking out. Yeah. I mean, I have a hard time disagreeing with you there. Oh. Yeah. See, yeah. a lot. Yeah. There's a, there's missed box outs. But even, but, uh, you know, again, I think we see this with Gunn. We see it with uh, with a couple of other players on the perimeter. They're not fighting through screens properly. They're getting, they're easy to screen off as another missed free throw. Um, and, and Indiana puts themselves in a position a lot of times with these three pointers where the, the opposition is ready to shoot these threes and they're putting them up and they're making them. And Indiana does not approach their own offensive game that way. And that ends up creating some issues. All right. That free throw got made. We have Peyton Sparks in the game, but we've got Malik Renew in the game. So I guess that's that's progress, right? That we're not seeing both of these, both the both the big starters for Indiana out uh, at the same time. All right, defensively, again, okay, fought over the top of the screen there. Guys wide open. Yeah, see, I, I mean that was that was a missed assignment. I mean, did Renew? If I read that right, I'm I'm trying to do this in real time while looking at four different screens. But what Renew rolled and Banks went with the guy as well, and nobody came back uh, to to get the guy that was open at the three point line. Um, all right, Trey fighting through. That's a bad pass. Okay, this is this is concerning. Um, this is what worries me about Trey. Trey right now, he's got two points and twelve eleven and a half minutes have gone, and this is where Trey has consistently tried to do way too much and has gotten into himself into his own head in a way that's not conducive to winning. Hey, CJ Gunn hit a shot. Okay, that's 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 not bad. You'll take that if it goes in. Now Indiana needs to get a nice defensive possession here. Another screen. Okay, Gunn I got okay. Okay, again, Gunn couldn't figure out to go over or under the screen and did neither. Another three, so that's four now for Moorhead State. Yeah, that was kind of a cheap three. Banks, okay, some uh, Banks might need to sit down for a little bit here. That's that's not that's just that's two threes that have not looked good from him. Yeah, it looks like he's, they're going to bring Mbako in now. I'm I'm guessing that's who he'll replace. Uh, almost, yeah, uh, Renew almost gave up the step back. Kick out. Okay, see, extra pass there. Okay, fortunately, that didn't go in. I mean, Warren State's playing smart offense. I don't understand why Indiana isn't doing it. There's gun for three. That missed. Nice night. Okay, that's the kind of rebounding Indiana needs out of Renew. He, he had a, a weaker guy on him. He didn't get boxed out. He fought through it, and he managed to get the ball up and lay it in. I don't know the screen there. Uh, 
This defense, this this group worries me defensively. Are right, they going to get a, is that a reach, or do they get gun for that? Okay, looks like they got sparks on the reach. Uh, Jim said we're letting them hang around. I said that minutes ago. Um, I I mean the substitutions weren't um, weren't great, but I mean I don't know what you do there. I I, I mean. The big problem Indiana's got right now is as follows. Uh, there's two big things. You look at the stat sheet right now. They Both teams have hit the same number of shots, but Morehead State's hit four threes out of the 15 they've taken. Indiana's taken five threes and hit zero of them. Um, Morehead State's got seven offensive rebounds. Indiana's got five. Uh, and as our friend Dr. Hoosier points out, there's a 10-2 foul advantage for IU um, and despite that, because Indiana has only gone three for seven from the free throw line, Indiana's trailing by two. Um, okay, and ba- uh, Bernstein, uh, Jim Bernstein said, I think he let Mbaco sit too long. That that may be the case. Um, this is tough. And we talked about this earlier on in the year, back when I was still defending the substitution patterns more more strenuously you've got to get your younger players or your players that are going to be coming in off the bench a little bit of run. I mean, we saw in that Kansas game, um, like that's why you have to get them playing time, but, the, but then you leave them in for longer periods. Like you're playing Morehead state. You shouldn't have to bring Mbako back in right away. And the fact that, you know, you're, you know, banks throws up some bad shots and, and you're not getting good defense out of a couple of players that are out there. Uh, it, it really makes it a difficult situation because, you know, you, yes, you got to play your starters. You want to win the games, but um, you've also you've got to try to develop guys. These are the games you should be doing it in. It's it's not ideal. Um, J- Roger Swinney with the comment: We don't run and don't shoot threes. We'll never be, blue, beat good teams or blow out bad teams with this offense. I don't know. I mean, I I don't I I don't know if I totally agree. I think the bigger issue, frankly, is the defense. I'm going to keep saying that. I mean, the offense has not been great. But, you know, right now, in Indiana's allowing Moorhead State to score 1.095 points per possession. That's, that's, they can't do that at home. You can't let Moorhead State score essentially 1.1 points per possession that they use. Um, you, you, you forced a turnover on 5% of possessions so far from Moorhead State. That's not going to get it done. Um, you know, to me, as much as, and I know I'm not, I'm not pleased with the offense. I'm not defending the offense, but the defensive effort and intensity is just absolutely not there. And it's, 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 it's a hit or miss with the starters. And it seems like just mental lapses cause it to disappear when you get reserves coming in. And that is a real problem. Um, Huparazzi says Mbako can rest when they're 15 with five to play. Well, that will never happen, right? <laughs> um, all right, we're back to action. Uh, it sparks again to foul. Um, fortunately, I just got some fouls to give, but that's two on sparks in like, what, 30 seconds. Um, flat-footed on every pick. I've been that way for four or five years. It's been longer than that. I mean, I, I used had a real problem uh, with with screens and trying to fight around them or over them. It's been very, it's been very disappointing. It's been, I think it's been one of the big problems with the offense. This is a nice board by renew there. All right. Let's see if Peyton can do something. What was that? Wow. Okay. Well, All of Moorhead State's points have come from one guy on the floor right now. Oh, what? what geez, that was that was ridiculous. That that was just a defensive. That was that was Matador like there by IU. You can't do that. Now here's Malik. Okay, that's a nice open shot for Mbaka. Can't can't get it to fall. Mbaka's zero for four from the field so far in this game. Uh, Beast on the Diamond says, is this new? Really enjoy this. So thanks for putting it on. Uh, Yeah, this is new. This is the first time we've done this. If they keep playing like this, it might be the last time we do it. Wow. Another three. Um, That is uh, is Rick's. So now it's a seven-point game. Well, 
this is not trending in a positive direction. I'm glad I'm here with you folks talking about it, I guess. But um, Galloway, uh, what's the what's the move here? Okay, wide open three for Gunn. He's got to hit this. Oh. Whew. Okay. This is where I feel compelled to point out that um, CJ Gunn on the season now is um, is three for eleven from three, and um, if you if you add up his stats from from last year, he's um, seven for thirty five from three in his Indiana career so far. <laughs> so it feels like it's time for me to grab a beer um yeah i'm starting to feel that way myself that's that's not good there that's that's not gonna get it done um all right indiana all right thankfully norhead state some charity there threw the ball out of bounds so um Reset with the people on the floor. Um, Renew's got four points. Mbako's got two. Galloway's got two. Uh, Indiana shooting 34.6% and uh, over six from three. And three for seven from the free throw line so far. Where will the offense come from? With, I mean, this is the group you'd want out there. This is your starters. Okay, Galloway just, dro- again, trying to do way too much there. Goes, essentially goes one on three. Patrick... This is the 13-14 season. Well, I'd love to say no. You're wrong. Um, it's uh, it's I I this is this is a a really disappointing offensive performance uh, this season. Obviously, from this team. Uh, Trey, knock some free throws down here. Nope. Okay. The mental, the mental blocks that this team is running into right now is is pretty wild. Um, yeah, Moorhead crowding the post. IU needs to relax on wide open jumpers. Ah, man, he misses the second one. Yeah, this is. I mean, I think you're all hitting the nail on the head. Moorhead State clearly watched some film and was like, "Hey, you know what? This team's probably not going to hit shots." And so far, they've been right. There's Ware. Nice job by Ware not getting bullied there. All right, let's see. Well, Ware uh, gets a shot blocked. That was, believe it or not, that was Malik Ware, or excuse me, that was Khalil Ware's first shot attempt of the game. All right, what's this? That is off of Indiana. Okay, so that's going to stay there. All right. Um, Floor spacing typically isn't that good when you have three non-shooters out there. That's that's true. Um, run to make it easy on yourself. Um, not not great so far. Um, appreciate you folks uh, sticking with us here on this live Crimson Cast. <laughs> um, it was um, it was interesting. I was I was thinking about this before the game. We're going to talk football, by the way, at halftime. I might as well save. Let's save the good vibes for then. Um, they're doing a great job making IU play out of their comfort zone. Absolutely the case. Um, and that's a smart team. I mean, that's a that's a team that knows what they're doing and is like, you know what, we're we're gonna make it difficult on you. Um, and they've so far they've done it simply by making Indiana do things um that they're not particularly interested in doing, which is shoot the ball from outside. Um, let's see. So far. Some updated stats. Indiana's scoring on uh, uh, they're scoring at a points per possession rate of 0.808. That's that's real bad. That 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 is not going to get the job done. And they're allowing Morehead State to score at a 1.12 point per possession rate. Um, again, um, they did for IU did force a turnover there, so that's I guess uh, some small thing to cheer for. But um, IU nine for 27 so far in the game. <laughs> Dale Ficklin asks, does IU have a comfort zone? That's a reasonable question, sir. Um, I was landed from Rose Holman. Yeah, I think Rose Holman treats the three better than this one. I, I don't know that I could necessarily disagree with you there. Um, 
Let's see. Some other comments we'll get to. Galloway needs a break. I guess. I, I don't know. I like I don't know if you mean like he needs a, a physical break or if he needs just like a lucky break. He definitely needs a lucky break. Uh he I I wonder what that Kansas game would have looked like if he hadn't had that drive that uh that ended up in that first layup happen. Uh because he uh more than most players I can remember struggles so much um with when things don't go right, he really does struggle with the basics. Um, you know that scene in Wayne's World where Garth has to host his own. Did you ever see that scene in Scanners? Yeah, that's me by the end of this game. I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not shocked by anything I'm seeing. I'm very disappointed. I'm not shocked by anything I'm seeing, and um, it's again. I think Indiana could could they could survive the offensive issues as as bad as they've been so far if they would play hard-nosed aggressive defense and yet they're not and that to me i don't think this whatever chance that this season might have to be saved uh okay that was that's good that's not i don't know if i'd call that a forced turnover but they'll we'll take what we can get um but um you know until indiana really plays a lot more physically a lot a lot more aggressively defensively i think we're going to continue to see these types of performances where when the offense goes, they have literally nothing to fall back on. Now that's, oh my God, really now? Really? Really? That happened? Wow. Okay. Um, Matt Simon, enjoying this Crimson Cast cast at least. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. I, I'm glad we could we could deal with this together. This is, uh, this is the, the, you know, it, it takes a village to to survive this type of a performance, I suppose. Another wide open three. Fortunately, that missed. I mean, Morehead State's five for seventeen from three. Um, that they, we, the IU's been real lucky that they haven't been better from three so far in this game. And let's see. What are you doing, Malik? I'm throwing the ball away. Apparently, okay. IU has not scored in four minutes and thirty-four seconds. There's a foul on Malik. That is his second. IU is 0 for 6, uh, 0 for their last 6, 1 for their last 9. The only thing that's saving Indiana right now is um, Morehead State hasn't scored in 2 minutes and 53 seconds thus far. Did anybody see the clarinet girl side eye? I, I, I missed that. This is what I get from watching too many screens at once. I'll have to go back and check that out. Um, yeah, yeah. Now they're now they really are daring IU to shoot. Fortunately, Moorhead misses that free throw. Um, okay, I hit the wrong button there. Um, where is coasting? I don't. I don't know if where is coasting. You may be right. I, I'm not. I'm not an expert enough to know for sure. But I would say that he is way too tentative, and um, I, I don't know if that's coasting. It's not good, whatever it is, but. I look at it more as as he is is not being strong, uh, and we talked about why. See, that's yeah, that's. I think to some degree, this is we're seeing like all of the most troublesome traits for this team start to come out, uh, and you can see. I mean, Ware is clearly frustrated because I think like that shot that he just took. I think that's a shot he's just used to taking and hitting and it's it doesn't look like a great shot for us but we've seen where hit shots of a similar quality and they've gone in but again it's not going in and it's having this building effect and the same thing's happening with galloway and there's that's okay yeah uh, that's another i wow well this is um a 10 point lead now for morehead state I don't know why this is what I'm talking about with the aggressiveness. It's it's almost like Indiana defensively is being instructed to back off of physical contact and rely on rim protection. And I don't actually know why you're doing that against Moorhead State of all teams. Like make Moorhead State go up against you. 
I mean, you, you're you're leading in fouls. It's still ten to five in fouls. It's not like you're in foul trouble, but you know, make them feel physically threatened. Now, I mean, not well. That sounded bad. You know what I mean? Make make their make their offensive game feel physically threatened. All right, here's Trey again. That was well, that was way too much, but at least it went in. But man, um, if that's what it takes for Indiana to get their offense going. <laughs> If you want to pivot and call the 87 title game instead, I'll understand. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hoosier. Appreciate it. There's a, okay. That was better defense there. That was in Baco. He, he see that's what I'm talking about. Don't give a clear lane. Don't give space and expect that you're going to block the shot. Just, just like make it hard. That's another, that's say, there you go. All right. A couple of layups by Trey in a row there. That's, that's maybe what he needs. This first half is infuriating. Trade punches with Kansas. This is the next product. It is infuriating, but it's also what happens in college basketball a lot. I mean, I I don't like it, but it happens to every team. It's not just an Indiana thing. I mean, we see teams throw up amazing efforts against top-level opponents because everybody's motivated. And then, you know, win or lose that next game, I mean, there's no way to summon that same level of energy. And, you know, for Moorhead State, playing Indiana is – you know, that's that's like I mean you could that you'll you'll get a contract extension if you beat Indiana. All right. Missed three out of bounds. Okay. All right. All right. Well that was a that was an okay defensive possession. So we're going to a break. So timeout, I guess, by Indiana there. Yeah. Um, let's get to some comments. But yeah, Northwestern lost to Chicago State at home after beating Purdue. I mean, granted, there was a couple of games um, later uh, or after that. Where is uh, fast and long enough to not play drop coverage? Which is why, I mean, to me, that's a that's a, that's a decision that's being made by Indiana um, in, in terms of their defense, um, Trey remembering he should drive the lane. Yeah, absolutely. Um, love on the show where he plays exposing an awful call by the ref. No, uh, no comments from me there. Um, cups is a complete non-factor on offense. You need more from your guards. I get it's not what he's being asked to do, but you need something it's so this is the thing with cups. Um, I think we've said this before, like he, He's not taking anything off the table in terms of like he's he's playing good defense effort wise, uh, but he's not adding anything offensively. That was a terrible shot by Walker. God. Okay. Um, well, Indiana's got a choice here. Can they play good defense and get themselves to the half, maybe down four or five? Well, or 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 you could do that instead. I guess that's that's the other option. All right. Well, I guess get something out of this possession and get home. All right, what do you do here? I mean, is it Trey on a kick out or? So he drives it. Oh, my God. Really? Wow. Okay. Well, that was, um, that was, that was, uh, I would call that emblematic of what we saw in the first half. <laughs> you you get the lead down to 32-25 and then you get a um you give up a a a lob and then this is your final possession. We're watching the replay. What is Trey doing? Just kick the ball out to Mbako. Like why would you go behind the back there? I don't I don't understand that. Um anyway, that's not ideal. Uh, well, thank you all for sticking with me. We're, we're going to, we'll keep rolling on this. Um, you, I don't blame you if you abandon the game uh, or the, or the, the broadcast here, but we're going to, we're going to stay here. Um, uh, and we're going to talk some football here in a second. Um, but I'm going to get a couple of comments in from the folks that are out there. Uh, C said 25 points and a half is embarrassing. I would actually argue, uh, What's more embarrassing is that Indiana scored three quarters of a point per possession 
that that's embarrassing. That's real bad. Uh, Morehead stayed in that half, scored 1.1 points per possession. Um, Hoosier Laddie said, more excited to talk IU football. What a world. It's it's true. Um, a lot of I'm not going to post a lot of these uh, because they're all saying ex- 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 essentially the same thing. Um, I think they wanted two for one. Not good selection, though. Can't argue with that. Um, let's let's take a break. Let's breathe for a minute. Let's talk about IU football because there's a lot of good stuff to talk about with IU football. And we could use a little bit of brain bleach, I think, after what we just witnessed there. So um, let's start off by talking about the big news from today. IU flips Tyler Cherry, the uh, quarterback from Center Grove. Um, this is a four star. This is like a bona fide, like legitimate, like pro prospect down the line type of player. And um, he chooses Indiana. He After he decommits from Duke, he's got essentially two schools suddenly going after his services, one of them being Michigan State and one of them being Indiana. And Cherry chooses Indiana, which, I mean, there's so much that that particular, um, like, being able to flip a guy like that, it brings up a lot of questions that I think you have to ask about, like, why, why would things have changed so much from the previous staff to the current staff that you'd be able to bring a guy like that in who would want to play at IU. And now that's two pretty well-regarded quarterbacks that are coming in in this upcoming class because you're going to have Tyler Cherry and you're going to have Alberto Mendoza, who's the three-star out of Miami that was going to go to James Madison and then flipped and is now coming to Indiana. So that's two guys, um, both of which I think have real good chances at being good college quarterbacks down the line. And I think Cherry's got some legitimate professional prospects uh, if he continues to develop. And you consider that they also brought in Curtis Rourke, who is a really highly regarded uh, quarterback out of the Mid-American Conference. Um, you've got, you know, th- that's a player that you can build an offense around for this upcoming year. Uh, and, um, you know, Dr. Hoosier mentions cherry. the cherry pickup is huge, kind of feels like Eric Gordon flipping to IU after a coaching change. One of the fascinating things about that recruitment was, you know, that first week that Signetti and his group were in, they offered Cherry, and they also offered Cherry's brother, um, Kobe Cherry, I think is his name, which is just a tremendous football name. Uh, and, and that kid seems legitimately good. Sophomore, I think he's, he had like 65 or 70 tackles uh, in his uh, in this past season on the varsity. And that... Like that, that the uh, the thing I've heard from a bunch of people, and and look, I'm not I'm not a recruiting expert. I've never claimed to be. I've I've never been, um, you know, overly focused on recruiting. I care more about once the guys get here and now in the transfer portal, like what it looks like there. That's a little bit easier, I think, to gauge. But the, you know what I'd heard consistently the last several years was that Allen and his staff just weren't recruiting Indiana well. I mean, clearly they'd gotten a few Indiana kids. But the number of Indiana kids that they just weren't in the running for was really unfortunate. And, and you know, clearly Allen and his staff very much focused on Florida. They were very comfortable recruiting Florida. And it's not like Indiana didn't get some good recruits out of Florida and Georgia. But, you know, I've always had a problem with the idea that, well, you know, if you're Indiana, you just you can't rely on recruiting Indiana because all the good players are going to go somewhere else. It's like, well, if they if you don't recruit them, sure. But, you know, I remind everybody like. You know the 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 quarterback that was the the linchpin of the really successful Mallory years was Dave Schnell, a four star out of I think he was out of Elkhart or South Bend, who came to IU when a lot of people thought he was going to go elsewhere, and that guy was a corner piece, and that was a guy that I don't know that previous IU coaches are recruiting, but Bill Mallory was like, we're going to go get this guy, and they got him. Uh, you know, you think about Anthony Thompson, IU you know, legend, only player with his, his number retired, uh, Indiana recruit, you know, came from Terre Haute. Uh, you know, so I don't think that, you know, you can solely rely on the state of Indiana for recruits, but to watch this staff go back in and in really short order, pick up a commit from a player of that caliber and get that player that excited about coming and playing in Indiana is a really good uh that I mean that that to me bodes really well. Vaughn Dunbar from Fort Wayne Snyder is another good example of that. Um 
<laughs> if you read the Pigs football board, a third of four to three stars better than Indiana four star through the Allen era. Well, I mean, that was that was always what the coaches said. And and thanks, Dan. Is Gunnar Keel coming? I, uh, Dan, you could have gone with Earl Hannaford there. I mean, it's not it's not a foolproof metric by any stretch of the imagination. But um, look, I, I think for Indiana to to be able to to pull that kind of a recruit, and um, you know, I think that this is a good point from from CW. Quarterback is the most important position in all sports. Indiana has the staff to groom them now. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, Indiana, I mean, this this staff, Signetti, Tino Sanceri, Mike Shanahan, has a proven track record now of developing quarterbacks. And that clearly is starting to resonate, not just with Mendoza and Kyler Cherry, but also with Curtis Rourke. And, you know, if Dexter Williams ends up transferring, which I think he will, that's a really nice quarterback room. You've got Rourke as a senior. You've got Taven Jackson as a sophomore. You've got Brock Lowry as a freshman. And then you've got Mendoza and Cherry coming in. Um, you know, you, and I feel pretty good about, you know, if, if Taven Jackson gets a full year of maturing under this group, he could either be a stopgap or a really good backup or might even compete for a starting position. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think Taven got a fair shake last year and certainly – it's hard to look at that offense that he started in under Walt Bell and say, yeah, you know, he just can't play. Like you really, I don't think you can say that. Um, anyway, the other exciting things, uh, they get Mikhail Kamara today, transfer from James Madison. We think he has two years of eligibility left. Uh, that's a really productive defensive. And that's an area that clearly this staff has put a premium on. This is a very different approach from how Allen and his defense focused. Allen and his defense were really focused on linebackers and, and had great linebackers. Michael McFadden was an excellent linebacker. Uh, you know, obviously you got you got great play this year out of the linebackers, but you know, there's other ways to play defense. And uh, clearly, Indiana's defense wasn't doing enough to put them in a position to win more games, especially down the stretch. Um, so that's the the only transfer they've brought in on defense thus far has been Kamara. Most of their work there has been in recruiting. But so far, you know, they, they've pulled several players that were going to go to James Madison, Daniel Nduque, William DePape was actually a commit to Georgia Tech. Mario Landino was going to James Madison. Uh, they've retained a couple of guys. They got an ESPN 300 safety in Jaja Boyd out of the Pittsburgh area. Uh, but they've done a lot of their transfer work so far on the offensive side. And I think they've built a really impressive group. Uh, you know, Keyshawn Williams coming in from Wake Forest. Uh, and then they get Miles Price and Miles Cross. So you add those guys to McCulley, Williams, and Kobe. That's, you're probably, you know, and then you've, you've still got Omar Cooper. You've still got Cam Perry. Um, you know, that's a, that's a really nice receiving room. That's a receiving room you can do a lot of things with. And, uh, and then Justice Ellison, obviously. Um, at running back um, comment here from here's the thing about football recruiting. It's fun to get flashy recruits. It's about development. It's all about what they do when they get here. And I trust the staff to develop. They've shown they can do it. Allen and company failed there the last three to four classes. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with, with that take. Uh, I think that the important thing, it, one of the things that I've heard, and, and this has been a concern, I think it's, it's a legitimate concern to some degree is how, how well will these guys translate to the Big Ten? Because you know a lot of these guys were James Madison recruits. You know, so that's the Sun Belt. Um, the where th there's two things here. A, Signetti went out of his way to say he doesn't really care about star ratings. What he cares about is uh, you know his own evaluations. And I think you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be able to develop these players, and they like what they see out of them. And look, I also think that. There's not a lot of a difference between what Allen was bringing in with a lot of Mac level recruits, where Indiana was oftentimes the only Power Five offer, and what you get from Sun Belt players. Except that sometimes I think the players that you are recruiting to the Sun Belt are a little more athletic than your standard issue Mac recruit. Um, but a lot of it's going to come down to development. Indiana needed to restock. Um, you know, Taylor Layman at Bite Size Bison has talked about this a bunch. Um, the scholarship charts messed up. Uh, there's only 10 juniors right now in, in the junior class. And I mean, some of that will, there'll be COVID years that'll, you know, make it so that the class is slightly bigger, so on and so forth. But uh, only 10 juniors and 14 sophomores and 10 freshmen. I mean, the cupboard's a little bare. Uh, so, 
A, I think you're going to see a lot more transfer movement coming in. You'll probably see a few more guys leaving. But Indiana needed to stock that incoming class of recruits and develop those players. And some of them aren't going to pan out. I mean, you know, that's the case with every recruiting class. But I think it's less of a, of a risk now because if Indiana can play well next year, and let's say only 60% of the guys that come in can actually hack it physically at the Big Ten level, okay, fine. They transfer somewhere else. You bring in new players, um, either through recruiting or through the transfer portal yourself. I think the idea is, can you can you get a group together that, A, you can develop, but B, can you play good enough that you're going to develop a level of excitement around Indiana football, which it seems like they're doing. I mean, the, the players they're pulling in across the board here are pretty good quality players, at least on offense. Uh, I mean, Ka Ka Kamara on defense is a, is a high quality player, I would say. That's a nice addition. Uh, Trey Wedig, you know, he was that's a good offensive lineman. That's a tackle that you can use. Um, the three wide receivers, I think one of them is uh, the Texas Tech kid, I think is likely going to be probably the replacement for Jalen Lucas at returner. Um, and then the other two, I think, can slide right in. You've got a slot receiver in that mix. Uh, you've got a more possession-based guy. Uh, Justice Ellison, now you've got really three proven running backs that you can rotate between him, Henderson, and Howland. Um, and then you've got obviously the quarterback room, and uh, you know I think I think Patrick brings up a good point. You'll probably see some guys leave after spring ball. Staff gets a look, and then they suggest they find time elsewhere. And that's how this stuff is supposed to work. And um, yeah, Doctor Hoosier mentions that Wedig and then Carter Smith, who Indiana was able to retain, most confident I felt about tackle in about a decade. And and I I would tend to agree. There was a comment earlier from um, from uh, Death Polden. I've, I've I've always been fascinated by that that Twitter name. Tell us how you feel covering IU football throughout the down stuff. And then this seeming surge of positive IU football energy. Is this fool's gold or something different? I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's fool's gold. I'm hesitant to say one way or the other. I'll say this. There's two things that stand out. A, this is by far in a, in, in a non-bowl year, and, and honestly, sometimes even in bowl years, the most excitement I've I've seen around IU football in a long time. Um, that is like the, the buzz that's being generated by what the coaching staff has done over the course of this last couple of weeks. And the way that they're promoting it is it's infectious. And I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, I also think that the comments you're hearing from the guys that have gone on recruiting visits and have subsequently committed, a lot of it really does sound and feel like nothing we've really sounded and felt like before. And the, the types of recruits, the transfer portal guys that are coming in, feels like a different type of player. These are productive players. I mean, you look at the players Indiana brought in last year and the year before, I, I, I just, I think if you did a numbers for numbers, you would find that most of them didn't match the production. I mean, the big off-season acquisitions last year were EJ Williams, who really never did much at Clemson, and uh, and Taven Jackson, who barely played at Tennessee. And look, I think they're both fine players, but to add the the number of contributors that have already proven they can contribute at the Power Five level, I think that's um, that's good. Um, you know that's that's a that that's a sign of a, a corner being turned a little bit. Um, it's it's a pretty fascinating thing. I don't know if it's fool's gold or not, um, but I I do think you know we, I mean a bunch of comments here. Um, you know the, the James Crimson Cash two sixty from from uh, Crimson Cash. One of the wide receiver transfers from Ohio should have some chemistry with the quarterback. Um, IU basketball has become Nebraska football. That's mean. Um, as, as Dr. You know, Nebraska football picked up the number one quarterback in the country. I get the point, though. Um, but look, I may get IU football tickets next year, something I never thought of before. Um, it's uh, That's the energy I've heard from a lot of people. Uh, I had somebody else today um, who said I might actually go to a couple of games next year. The, the number of people who don't, even think to go to IU football, like it's not even on their radar, is pretty sizable. Um, does Signetti remind you of Hepner at all? Different energy. Um, the, the, not one better than the other. You know, Hepner's, Hepner's greatest trick was getting people to believe 
I think Signetti's greatest trait is getting people to realize how much he believes in himself. And that becomes infectious. And that probably sounded weird, but that's about the best way that I can put it. Um, Walnut412 said, I was talking to a friend of mine who said he hadn't been this excited about IU football in five years. When I reminded him the 2021 IO game was a little over two years ago, he couldn't believe it. I know. It's wild that it was not that long ago. Anyway, uh, I hate to break up the football good vibes, but it's basketball again. Uh, the, the half just started, so let's see what Indiana can do here. They really can't afford to lose this game if they have any kind of – they're harboring any, any, any desire to do anything in the postseason. And I'm not even just talking about NCAA at this point. There's – Okay, that's not a bad defensive possession. And Indiana's got to be more aggressive. And Malik, was that just out of bounds? Or was that, I guess that was just out of bounds. So out of bounds there, I guess knocked out by Moorhead State. Okay, that's a nice inbounds play. Got, got Malik into a good position. And... Able to pick up the foul. It's funny, Moorhead State, um, I'm pretty sure I've uploaded this. There was a guy who coached at Moorhead State. His name was Dick Fick. Um, That's another nice inbounds play. Hey, Khalil Ware scored. All right. Um, But Dick Fick, was uh, he was a legend back in the 90s. He was probably the most demonstrative coach. Look him up on YouTube. Um, Okay, Viper says I'm on a delay. Viper, that's interesting because I I've done nothing. My I have not changed my TV stream or anything. So um, I'm sorry if I'm on a delay. We got another foul. Yep, another foul. Okay, good. All right, that's a good start for Indiana. Um, Clavio ta- cast sounds like a 1960s Italian television company. I I agree. I always get I get I get weirded out if you, if ever you listen to. We listen to Bill Simmons' podcast. One of their sponsors, and they're a sponsor of other podcasts, is this company called Clavio. It, have, you, have you seen this? It's spelled differently. It, it's K-L-A-Y-V-I-O. I don't even entirely know what they do. All right, that's another – that's good. I wish Khalil had hit that shot. But that's that's good for him to make to get that turnaround up and going to go to the free throw line. Hopefully he can hit some free throws here. All right, Alex said, regarding the need for more tenacious D – Woody's first team brought that when they couldn't bring the offense. Was that because of Archie leftovers? Or does the team grasp it better? That's a great question. Um, I mean, look, I think that there's no question to me that this team defensively is missing Xavier Johnson. Um, that hurts in a lot of ways. But I also think um, I think the composition of the team is a little bit different than than that team was in that. There were a lot of, I mean, that was a pretty aggressive defensive team overall in terms of the individual players. And, you know, as much as Archie's teams, I think, deservedly got criticized for how bad they were offensively, um, you know, they 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 could play pretty decent defense individually. I mean, they, they that last season, they were 43rd in the country in defensive efficiency. We thought that was bad. Um, you know, foul there on Malik. I mean, that... That last year of Archie was um that was a that was a better technically, at least in terms of ranking uh defense and certainly in terms of adjusted efficiency than the team was last year. Um, I don't know what the drop off has been. I mean, you look at the team that Indiana had in in that first year, and there was a there was more quickness, I guess. Uh, you know, you had Parker Stewart playing a lot of minutes. Race Thompson was healthy back then. Um you know, Xavier was playing and, and was doing a lot defensively. And uh, you kind of had this mix of Bates and Finnessy and uh, a couple of other people that were getting more more consistent minutes. It felt like a, a team that was a little more aggressive. That was a foul call on Malik. He didn't like that, but um, it was it was whistled. So let's see. Indiana is... They're down eight, five for 11 from the free throw. And that's just ridiculous for Indiana. And uh, they're just, what's kept Indiana in the game so far, so to speak, that's a bit of a force there by 
Khalil, but at least Khalil is trying to do some stuff. Um, you know, he's he's being more aggressive. This is what we talked about in the first half. Um, and actually, Matt Hoosier brings up a good point about that that first Woodson team, the Rob Galloway ex defensive lineups were mega elite. Um, they were to some degree. Um, it's um, there's this been something kind of intangible that's been lost in terms of the the overall. Um, the, the 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 intensity of the defense has been just unreasonably poor at times. Not all the time. And I thought the defense actually played pretty well against Kansas, all things considered. All right, you got both free throws to go. That's great. Um, so down six. All right, let's see what they do here. So. I'm looking. I would. I'm guessing there was going to be a high screen. Yeah, there it was. Okay, Galloway. The Galloway. Uh, uh, you know, if you notice this, he overcommits to trying to defend the drive, and that has led to a lot of openings. That's a nice pass by Cups. That's a nice finish too. Nice job. Okay, that's now we're talking. That's better. That is much better. That is a nice. That is a nice way to start the second half there, and I like. I like Cups. With that pass, that was a confident pass. You can see it here if you're on the replay. Um, that's a dangerous pass, too. <laughs> I'm glad that that actually worked. But, you know, Ware went from being an offensive non-entity to now he's got eight points, and uh, he's four for five from the free throw line. This is interesting. Yeah, Dan Hurley said he gave up toughness and defense first mentality and went looking for shooters. Well, IU hasn't found that either. Um I, you know, look, I mean, part of the issue to some degree, I think, is uh, Indiana's got a bit of a conundrum in terms of how it's like who it's going after and who it's recruiting. They do need they do need shooters. But I mean, you, you'd be hard pressed to look at that UConn team and not not say, gosh, you know, Dan Hurley knows how to coach defense. And there's something that's getting lost in the translation, it feels like, with with Woodson and this coaching staff, because the defense has gotten worse every year. Uh, and, and we've talked about this on the show. I'm not breaking any news here. Uh, and it's it's still not like awful. But, you know, this year so far, Indiana's 70th in the country in defense, uh, defensive efficiency. Last year, they were 45th. The year before, they were 24th. And this has been the thing. I think it's probably, and I, this is what I keep harping on in, in this, um, in this this whole season, but, but, it is, but in this game too. Indiana has to have a defensive identity. They have to be the team that's hard to score against. They have to be the team that's hard to play against. And I've watched a lot of teams, including UConn earlier this year, uh, where I'm just like, I felt like the other team was the team that I would have hated to play against. And um, as as we see here, yeah, it's funny how inconsistency can define a team's positive or negative identity. It's true. Uh, and I think the, the, the problem with Indiana defensively is like they've got, They've got the physical tools to be a tough defensive team without Xavier Johnson, without that aggressive kind of big guard running things. It puts a lot of other players in a tough position, but it also, uh, you know, I don't know that Mackenzie and Baca is ever going to be an aggressive defensive player. I don't, I don't think that Malik Renew can physically be aggressive defensively without fouling, which is a real problem. And I just don't think Khalil Ware is that kind of a player. So, you know, none of those three players would I say don't recruit them or don't bring them into the program. But then you've got them. If you can't get them to play that way, it creates some of the issues that I think we're seeing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's not unrecoverable, but I do worry about the trends with the defense here with with this IU team and and where it's going to go. And um, you know, we we got. You know, the, the, it's interesting though. You know, Hooper Otzi is you can teach defense, hard to teach shooters. I mean, I agree to some degree, but I think there's a mentality to playing defense really, really well that it's it's very difficult to teach. I mean, we've seen some players with a lot of great physical char cap uh, characteristics and capabilities who just did not have the mentality to play the type of defense that we want to see Indiana play yeah, that, that there you go. Another three and another nice cross court pass. Let's see what Indiana does here.
Yep. Okay, good job by Trey. Some big possessions here for Indiana. Cups got completely. Yeah, that was that'll okay. That's that's technically Ware's fault, but Cups got lost trying to chase that around. That's that's yeah, Woody's gonna take a timeout here. He can't be happy with that. Like that was that was not that was not good. See, that's again. <laughs> if you if you can read lips, I, I'll uh, hide the children. But I will I will go ahead and re retell what Mike Woodson said as they came over. He said, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" And uh, I would ask the same question after that last defensive possession. Woo! Um, give Galen a PBR and line him up on defense. I I can say for certain, Matt Cohen, I do not have the mentality to play the type of defense that's needed at this level. Um, all right, let's give you an update. So, um, points per possession, Indiana's at 1.07 in this one, uh, surrendered their, their offensive points per possession has gotten significantly better 0.95. Uh, they've really recovered there nicely. Um, okay. We've got a little mini debate going on here. Matt Simon says, I reject that you can't teach shooters. Peep that 2016 team. Why do Sun Systems allow shooters to flourish in a way ours doesn't? We'll come back to that. I think it's a you guys could fight it out amongst yourselves. I'm kind of curious what everybody's thoughts are on that. Okay, McKenzie's been real quiet since the early going. That's a nice offensive move, but he got blocked, and that's a jump ball. Okay, that'll be Indiana's ball. Yeah. And McKenzie got suckered into that one. He's got to be he's got to be stronger and, and quicker with that. All right, little where where three is that a three? I think that was a three. Was that a three? No, it was a two. Damn. All right, there's okay. I almost got beat on that layup again. But fortunately, where scares people just enough that it, they get scared off a little bit. Okay, there you go. Little, that's nice. Nice job there by Mbako. Crowd looks like it's getting into it a little bit. All right, Indiana. Oh, oh, get the ball. Get it. Get it. No. Oh, what a. Oh, another, another, another missed box out there. I think that was Walker again. And another foul. Moorhead already has committed 14 fouls on the game. Um, I don't know what they're at for this half. What are they at for the half so far? Four for the half. Um, going to timeout. So five point, five point margin. Uh, okay, some questions I'll answer here. I'm curious how you'd grade Mbako's season so far. Good questions so far. This has been really fun. I, I've enjoyed the questions. Um, feel like he's shown flashes of NBA talent, but his defense is so bad. I haven't seen enough to believe he's a one and done. It's interesting because I've kind of got a similar um, feeling. He has not played well enough, I think, to legitimately be considered a draft prospect at this point. And I think he's probably got to realize that at this point. Uh, I think he's gotten better. And certainly his offensive numbers, if you take like the most recent games, have gotten better. Uh, but it's still very hit or miss. I mean, he's two for eight from the field in this game, but he's got four rebounds. Uh, I, I do like the, the the idea that he's able to find other ways to contribute sometimes, but not defensively. It's generally like with rebounding or something like that. Um, Galen is more full, foul prone than Renew. Guilty. Absolutely. Um, continuing continued lack of a real leader on this team who gets us a bucket when we need it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's true. Uh, and this is where, again, Galloway's picked it up a little bit. I mean, he had two points with about 12 minutes gone. He's got eight now and he's four for seven. But Galloway, as much as he tries, over tries. And that's not what you need out of a leader. Like it's, it's more of a I'll go do it myself kind of thing, which I don't think helps. Um, renew and wear are just not of the right mentality to be leaders like that. Cups, Cups still, Cups has zero points, has taken one shot, has one assist through 19 minutes. Um, 
there's really, yeah, I mean, this is where, again, as much as I know there's a lot of fans who don't really, like, they aren't fans of Xavier Johnson's game, this is what Xavier Johnson does bring to the table. Um, and when you don't have him, this, there, it's, it's, a, it's a flock without a border collie. Regarding shooting, IU has open shots. They just don't hit them. Several in this game, in fact. I can't argue with that. They're 0 for 6 from 3. And they've all been pretty wide open shots. Like, those aren't forced threes. They're just not hitting them. Um, Max, since the start of the Kansas game, has gotten a lot better at going downhill. I agree with that. I, I really think from Mbako, if he can keep foul trouble out of what he does, his offensive game can really open things up for Indiana as long as Indiana is giving enough space for him to drive. And, you know, this is where you you've got to be careful if you're going to play two big men, where are you going to position Mbako? But I think if the positioning's right, it's very hard to cut off a driving Mbako without giving up either a pass or an open shot. Um, and we had a top flight three point shooter the last two years, never ran any sets for him. Well, there's where that was kind of forced. He was looking for the foul there and didn't get it. That was a that was too bad. The Indiana really needed the basket there. All right, another well, almost a turnover. A little more aggressive on the perimeter here. This is maybe promising. Now, like, uh, yeah, that. Okay, that's that's what I'm talking about. Again, people have watched film of Galloway, and they know that if you jab step him in, like as you're like you're heading to the basket, he's going to overcompensate, and that's what led to that three being wide open. So happy you're doing this. I don't have to listen to Bruce Weber. So I, I guess I have to. There's cups, uh, man. Uh, I guess I have to come on here every time Bardo or. Bruce Weber's doing a game. Is that is that the idea? All right. Good contest there by Ware. Indiana really needs a bucket here. Uh, bad pass. Wide open three. Well, this is not trending in the right direction. Indiana, may, may, they did all that work. This actually reminds me a lot of the Auburn game without quite the same level of terror. Um, oh, Walker, wide open three. Oh, oh, he hit one. Walker. Is that? That was his first made three of the year. Nice job, Anthony Walker. First, first made three of the year for Anthony Walker there. And a nice assist by Cups. I mean, I'm, I'm glad the pass where it was supposed to. Oh, that's a foul on Khalil. Yeah, see this. I, th uh, again, and it, it kind of ties into the same issue we talked about with where's defense down low. Again, okay, yeah. The, IU just, I, this is this has got to be schematic. They're They're just so focused on defending the drive. And, you know, now, now Moorhead State has hit eight threes in this game. Uh, they're hitting 36% from three. Uh, at, this, at that point, it's an official problem. Like, I'd rather give up a, a stronger drive or, like, you know, I'd give up the two there if you have to. Um, Anthony Walker is last ditch save here off the bench. Uh, did not have that on the bingo card. I mean, Walker's got, what, 11? Yeah, he's leading. Walker's the leading scorer right now. All right, missed free throw. All right, cups pull up from seventeen. That's a, it's not a good shot. Hey, you know, we we talk a lot about the lost art of the mid range, and the the reason the lost art of the mid range happened is because the mid range shots aren't good shots. They're not efficient shots. Um, that's on the on the best of days. That's about a, the shot maybe you hit thirty. 33, 34% of the time. Um, 
All right, lucky there that they missed that. And then uh, another near turnover by Trey there, but he gets fouled. That was the, the fifth foul, I think, on Morehead in this half. Yeah, that was foul five. So Indiana will have have it back. Indiana shooting 39.5%, which isn't a whole lot worse than what Moorhead's shooting. But Moorhead's hit eight threes, and Indiana's hit one. And that that's pretty much the whole margin of, of uh, defeat here. Nope. Oh, that was not a bad shot by Mbako. Just didn't go in. And uh, McKenzie's now 0 for 2 from 3. Well, Lathan's got 26. I just want to note this. Um, the, the guy that just hit that shot is 10 for 19 from the field. He's 5 for 9 from 3. He's got 5 rebounds. Um, and, I mean, he's, he's a good player, uh, but he's not that good. Uh, Jordan Lathan came into the game. Uh, with an offensive rating on the season of 106.9. Um, he uh, he scored 26 against North Alabama, which, you know, that's that's great. But he, um, he scored 12 points against Purdue on 5 of 14 shooting. He scored uh, 14 points against Alabama on 5 for 13 shooting. This is not a guy you would expect to be uh, filling up the score sheet. This this is only like he's scored a lot here recently. He's been on a bit of a tear, but it's been against Midway. I'm assuming that's not the actual Midway. Uh, in you know, oh my God, wow. Uh, Austin P, Chattanooga, North Alabama, and Saint Mary of the Woods. Oh, they only scored 12 points against Saint Mary of the Woods. So maybe we maybe we should look at their defensive approach and see if that would be be better. A offensive foul there. All right, we're going to a timeout. Well, this is um, this is well beyond danger zone territory. I I will be shocked if they figure out a way to to come back in this one. Um, this is this is not getting it done. Um, couple comments. Uh, what do we got? I'd be happy to be in the bonus if we weren't such a bad free throw shooting team. Safe for Mbako. I, I understand the sentiment. I really do. Um, believe it or not, Indiana is um, <laughs> they're 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 seventy percent from the free throw line. That's not that bad. Uh, they 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 hit seven out of every ten that they they shoot on the course of the season. Uh, they could be better, um, but uh, what else we got here? Um, I think the amount of production loss from last year's team is understated. Trace Jackson Davis, Race Cop, Jalen. Agree. We talked about this, but uh, I mean, look, the, you lose Trace Jackson Davis. You got to figure out a way to replace that offensively. Um, but again, I, I think the bigger problem here is nobody's defending uh, and and Indiana like to, to let a guy in your own arena who's not that great of a scorer and has only played 20 minutes, score 26 points, shoot 10 for 19 from the field and five for nine from three. That's bad defense. Um, and And that's that's what that's what's problematic to me with all of this. Um, Patrick uh, Patrick noting that uh, there's four forwards and a center on the floor, which is not ideal. Um, yeah, this is rough. I'm sorry, guys. This is uh, and gals, those of you out there. Um, I guess we're 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 dealing with it together, and that's the important thing. Um, little reset on everything. Uh, Anthony Walker leading the team with seven point or 11, 11 points, Malik renew seven rebounds. If you didn't look, you would never guess who the leading assist person is for Indiana. Right now. I would, you could have given me eight guesses and I would have maybe gotten it on the eighth guess. Caleb Banks leads the team in assists. He's got three so far on the game. Uh, more had say eight for 23 from three. Indiana has only shot eight and they've only hit one. Um, uh, misery does love company. I'm glad to be with you, folks. This is good. Darren, Darren commenting. This is not going to help their tournament hopes. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, 
their tournament hopes were already pretty much trashed. Uh, we talked about this on the last Crimson Cast uh, recorded podcast in that their best win right now is probably Harvard on a neutral floor. In order, I mean, even, even without this debacle, Indiana was likely going to have to go like 15 and five in the Big Ten and win two or three road games out of that group of Ohio State, Purdue, Illinois, and um, Wisconsin. Not Wisconsin. Um, there was another one. Ohio State, Purdue, Illinois, and there was one other one. Um, they were probably going to have to win two or three of those even to get into the conversation for the NCAA tournament. There's no other resume. And we've seen Big Ten teams with a very similar resume to what Indiana's got this year not make the tournament. Nebraska famously back in, I think it was 2018, didn't make it. Um, but this is um, this is not not shaping up very well. All right, back to action. Galloway was not ready to shoot that. All right, that's a nice job by McKenzie there. Keep the good work up in the podcast arena, Gail, and I enjoy the listen on my drive to work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um. All right. Well, at this point, you just got to play some defense. I mean, you're that's the only way back into the game is to keep Moorhead State from scoring. And if you can do that, maybe you can just cobble points together on every other possession. Um, yeah, it was some good good hustle play there by McKenzie. A nice job getting that guy up in the air. Okay. Playing good defense does not mean fouling twice in a five-second span, which is what McKenzie did there. Fortunately, he's only got two, even with that second foul. But, um, yeah, you can't, you can't stick your leg out like that. Eh, geez. Well, we're running out of things to talk about, I think. Um, well, Banks is back in the game. Indiana's leading assist, man. Okay, wide open three, spot up, nope. Nice rebound, no. Malik can't get the board. Spilled. Okay. Trey trying to fight over a screen and then silly foul reaching in from behind. This is absolutely painful. I agree. There is zero movement on offense. I also agree. Extremely disappointed with our rim protection. I also agree. Um, you guys are hitting all the, these are all the highlights. Important question this holiday season. What are your thoughts on the chocolate to peanut butter ratio of Reese's Christmas trees? Too much chocolate. I love chocolate, but I feel like that's, um, they, they've got it. It's just off a little bit. Uh, and, and probably something that they should um, to reevaluate slightly. Now, a couple of free throws. 13 point lead now. Baldur's Gate or Zelda Tears of the Kingdom for game of the year? Probably Baldur's Gate 3. I think it's a better, better game. Tears of the Kingdom, I think, suffers to some degree from what Breath of the Wild suffered with, which is, it just, there's too much. There's too much in it. Um, it's great, but there's too much in it. Yeah, guys just standing and watching. I mean, look, I, I think it's, this is a problem with this team from a mentality perspective. And and yeah, I mean, obviously it it, it you know, it goes back to, how how you're trying to reach them and, and what you're trying to do with them. Banks, just a bad shot there. I mean, one Banks is one for five now on the game. He's just pressing. This is what we see out of this team. They just, when things don't go their way, they just don't know how to deal with it. And um, we kind of saw, I mean, someone mentioned, I think it was, I think it was Hooperazzi mentioned the 2014 team. That team had very similar issues when things went bad. They didn't know what to do. 
Um, they just they 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 really struggled down the stretch with figuring out who was supposed to score, who they could rely on, like anything along those lines. Um, hey, Stevens, thanks for providing some entertainment during the game. Appreciate your commentary. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you watching. Um, all right. Vinny has got any chance here. They've got to get it to eight by the under eight. All right. Nice ball. Good ball movement. Good. Okay. Decision by cups. That's a, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe that'll get Gabe cups going. Uh, and the rest of the team that that was um, that was interesting. Let's, let's look at this again. The replay cups fake. He goes up. He just throws that up over his head. I I don't know. It feels like there was a, another pass that might have been made there, uh, but it went in. So I guess we can't complain too much. Come on, Gabe Cups, hit your free throw. <sighs> Mm. Okay. Uh, this is this is the oh, oh step back. Oh my god. Oh no. I think that's <laughs> well that's that does feel like ball game. Um wow. Again. Malik Renew, much like Galloway earlier, just juked out of his socks and then he goes back and commits the foul. So uh, Lathan here, if he hits this free throw, he'll have thirty. What's the? Do we have a? I, I don't. I don't have my research team uh, going on this game. But how many opposing non-conference opponents have scored thirty points? Individual players have scored thirty points in Assembly Hall historically. I mean, this feels like we're watching history in in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, Trey catch and shoot through. Oh, hey, you hit one. All right, good. Um, is there any possibility that Indiana might play uh, a good defensive possession here? Is it? Is that too much to ask? Okay, Trey got rubbed off on a screen. Oh, oh God. <laughs> um, we're gonna burn the tape after this. We're we're gonna burn we're burning the tape. Um wow. And Baco gonna force a, a foul there. That's uh that's five on Ziemi or e e is e e I can't pronounce it. Uh Yemi. Uh, Roger pointed out that graphic from earlier. Moorhead State 0 and 24 against Big Ten teams. Um, James noting that Notre Dame lost by 20 at home to Citadel tonight. I thought I thought Micah Shrewsbury was a, a basketball genius. How could that happen? Um, I have to say this is much more cathartic and less toxic than constantly refreshing Twitter. Yes, thank you, sir. That was the idea. Uh, very impressed with your composure. I'm losing it here. I, this is why I'm doing this. I mentioned this earlier, Ethan. Uh, this is why I'm doing the live stream. I'm, I can, to me, like, so to let you full, I mean, I've, I've been broadcasting for like a couple of decades now. So what I went to college for, um, when I'm just a fan, if you've ever sat near me or with me at a basketball game or a football game, I'm, I'm a miserable person to watch a game with. Uh, to the point, like, my wife won't go to games with me anymore. Um, but when I'm broadcasting a game, it's a completely, it's like a, a, a switch flips in my brain, and I'm able to watch it, and it's I kind of just all, I take it in stride, because I there's a part of my brain that's like, I have to talk about this, I can't just react to it. So that's, that's why I guess I'm composed in all of this. Um, just tuning in, not sure if this has been discussed. We're losing the three-point battle by 24. Believe it or not, Connor Morris, we have talked about this a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's not it's not ideal. Um, it's, it's not ideal. Um, hey, they missed one. Melanina down um, five possessions here. They, they really need to score. Um, 
Mbako. Well, look, all those, all you folks that wanted Indiana to shoot more threes, you're getting it here. Um, Dale says, "Good job, Gail. If it wasn't for you, I'd be watching Gunsmoke. I, uh, I feel like I've, I've led you astray, Dale. Uh, I'd, I'd rather be watching Gunsmoke right now, personally. But um, here we are. They're so much faster than IU. Why not put another guard in? I, I will say that it's interesting. Uh, that's a, that's an interesting question. I do think that um, this is where you." You probably just need to bite the bullet and get CJ Gunn back in the game as, as as poorly as he has played overall. You you just you you've got to have some speed. I think the problem, I, the big issue right now, is that you need offense, and the guys that are going to get you offense, which apparently is not Anthony Walker. Oh, good, he finally got it laid in. Uh, Gun is Gun has been so bad on defense that you, I don't think Woodson trusts him to put him in at this point. And that's it, it's it's not so much the on-ball defense that's the problem with Gunn. It's that he leaves shooters wide open, which is really what's been sinking Indiana in this game. Um, Three-pointer, Matt, lucky, rattled out. Indiana, let me get that one back. What are they going to do on this offensive possession? Uh, Kickball, okay, so that's a timeout. Um, should we worry McNeely decommits? No. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Our friend Landon la record for most points by a visiting player at assembly hall is 40. Last person to do it was Matt Hunter for central Connecticut state in 2012. I, uh, I had forgotten that game. Um, are we sure about that? Did they even play central Connecticut state in 2012? I don't see that on the, uh, we may want to double check that stat, Landon, because I'm uh I don't think Indiana's ever hosted Central Connecticut State. Um, so we may want to double check that. That's interesting. Um, Doc changes football seats to be nice to the folks around him. That's absolutely true. I move sections almost every year. Uh a lot of time left to be miserable. Well, as long as we've got each other, we can take anything that comes our way. That's that's my my message to you. Um before the game, I told my wife she wouldn't have to worry about me getting stressed. This should be a solid win. I guess to some degree, she didn't have to worry about you getting stressed because it was over early, relatively speaking. Um, I do miss gifts of cute animals on Twitter at times like this. I, I, I need to hire somebody to put those up. Is an immutable law of nature that either IU football or IU basketball Twitter has to be toxic at all times. Feels that way, doesn't it? Um, it's tough. It's tough. Um, yeah, I feel like Indiana social has, um, it, it's a venting session, but it gets way out of, it's way out of hand. Uh, and I've, I've contributed negatively to that in the past. I'm, I'm no, uh, no better off than anybody, uh, in terms of that sort of thing. Um, oh, I see. I, okay. I got that game now. Thank you, Landon. Um, 2012 2013 season and um yeah that was a bizarre one matt hunter 40 points eight for eight from the free throw line six for 11 from three uh no other players for central connecticut state were in double figures there that that game that's pretty wild can leo play any worse than gun here's the the problem this is where again i think i just if i if, if any message gets across it's uh, hopefully from from this it's the problem is the defense, the lack of defensive ability or focus. And I think the problem with Leal up to this point has been when he's had opportunities to play. He's been okay offensively, but he has struggled just as much as Gunn has defensively. And I, you know, th this is where, would it be any worse? It, it might be. Uh, I mean, because as much as Indiana's gotten gashed so far in this game from deep, um, you know, maybe the idea is, well, we need at least to take advantage of the the taller players. Okay, there's a good putback by Khalil Ware. Um, so anyway, that's why I think Leo and Gunn aren't playing because I just, you know, as as oh god, well, there's well, player blocked himself. All right, chance here to get the get the get the margin down to something a little more manageable. Okay, the offense has got to get faster than this. This this is this is already a slog. What are, like what is what is this? Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, this is taking way too long. Ah, needed that to fall. At least he got the free throws. Uh, is it an alternate universe that it, uh, this time for IU football is looking at a more positive vibe than basketball? It really feels that way. I mean, if you had told everybody on November 1st, given the way the two seasons looked like they were going to go, that everybody would be excited about football this time of the year and everybody would be like, well, see you next November for basketball, they probably wouldn't have believed you. Um, it really stinks no coach can seem to get over that mediocre bar. I believe this game shows just how far away from being a blue blood we still are. Well, look, um, here's the thing. I think um, so this is where you you can't you can't um, you can't speak against that approach with the idea that like this is that there's that there's like an inherent mediocrity. I, again, I will reiterate what I've said before. Indiana was a protected seed in the tournament last year. They won a lot of big games. Um, they, the roster composition the last two years has been weird and Indiana didn't do a great job of managing it. Um, but Indiana has been demonstrably better in the last two years in that they've made the tournament. And, um, that may seem like a low bar, but last year wasn't just making the tournament. They were a four seed. I think that, um, with any coach, there needs to be some time to get the roster reorganized. And in this case, I think Indiana's done a bad job of doing that thus far, but not so bad that I've got people asking like, Hey, should Woodson be on the hot seat? I don't think so. Not yet. Um, cause I think all, and Indiana's got the lead down to seven. Um, cause I do think that fundamentally, um, we've seen Indiana play at a higher level than they played pretty much the entirety of the Miller era, just in terms of the way that the players are, uh, are competing. It hasn't been good enough. Um, but I think if, if Indiana can get a, a, a better group of players in that folk that can play, especially can shoot. Um, I want to see what this program can do under that. I think as much as people are like, well, gosh, this is trending in the wrong direction. We can't get over the hump of mediocrity. We need to move on to a different coach. I, l- in the same breath, people look around and they're like, wow, look at Purdue. Look at how consistent they are. They've had Matt Painter for 15 years. And, and you know, you, Michigan State's had the same coach for uh, almost 30 years now. I mean, I I just don't think that changing coaches all the time, especially when you've made the tournament two years in a row, is going to get you any f- closer to where you're trying to get. To. That's a nice block by Khalil Ware. I, don't think, I just don't think it's going to get you where you think it's going to get you. Um, so that's why I don't think it's a really a, a conversation we need to be talking about right now, but that's just me. You're, you're certainly free to have a different opinion. There's where for three. Oh, God. Well, Indiana really needs to play some defense on this possession at the very least. Long possessions here. Miss three. That's good. Ah. I don't know what Trey was doing on that box out there. All right. Will Moorhead State be smart and take this all the way down? Yeah, they're just kicking out every single time. And Indiana's just collapsing every single time. Okay. Yeah. Thank thankfully that one was knocked out. Um yeah, Dr. Hoosier, this is this is a point I've been trying to make. IU suffers from not having playmaking guards as much as they do shooters. It's true. They just they they don't they fundamentally don't make plays. Um, and that's a real that's a real problem. And again, it's where you miss Xavier Johnson, who's not perfect, but he could at least do those things. Um winning this game is just plugging the dam with chewing gum. I disagree. Winning this game keeps the season going. That's the important thing. That's a Dangerous pass. That's a nice shot by Renew. Should have been a foul. Didn't get the call. Uh, officials have really grown to disrespect Malik Renew. I don't know if anybody's noticed this. Malik's always looking for foul calls. He's not getting them. And then he's getting calls uh, uh, whistled on him on the other end. Um, and I that's a reputation thing. That's as much a reputation thing as you know what we heard last year about how like refs, God, these are wide open threes. Now, somehow that missed. Um, God, very lucky for Indiana. Um, all right, this is a huge possession. This is a huge possession for Indiana. What are they going to do? 
hopefully not run the entire shot clock down again. All right, where are you going, Trey? Okay, to Walker. Oh, lane open. Oh, and a foul. Wow. 12-0 run for Indiana. 15-3 run over the last three minutes and 10 seconds. You're sending Anthony Walker to the free throw line, who has not hit a free throw so far in the game. Uh, let's see what he can do. Um, is he going to knock this? That was that was the 15th point for Anthony Walker, who uh, absolutely deserves the game ball thus far. It's a big free throw. All right, they just gave him the ball. Oh, he hit that. Nice. Okay. Well, this is a big comeback for Indiana. This is um this is this has been a nice string of effort. This is a huge defensive possession. You can expect Morehead State. Actually, I don't like what Morehead State's been doing. They've 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 been so free with their offense and they're clearly trying to run clock right now. And it's like, guys, you're up two. I mean, just run run your offense if you're Morehead State here. Don't don't bother with running the whole shot clock down. That that almost didn't. That was a problem. Okay, big. That's a long three. No cups gets it. All right. What can Indiana do here? Morehead State really extending their D here a bit. Galloway going to drive blocked. All right, well, he's going to have 11 seconds here, and they're going to go to a timeout. All right, well, hey, we're back in it. Um, let's see. A um, couple comments from here. Coaching matters. Hurley won last year with four stars and less. Not always about landing the big fish. That's true. And again, I'd remind you, like, not as successful, but, um, I mean, Woodson did a lot last year with a, a, a kind of a hodgepodge of players. I'd also note, again, Going back to talking about the coaching thing, last year was Hurley's fifth full year, and he missed the tournament the first two years and lost in the first round the second of those, the third, excuse me, the third and the fourth of those years, and then won a national championship. So, again, I think sometimes we talked about this with Tony Bennett. We've talked about this with some other coaches. We we underestimate sometimes. You know, you can get to the tournament, but getting a team that actually is playing all in one direction is not something that happens overnight uh with with hiring coaches occasionally it does but it doesn't happen that often um bryce said really thought we could shop people and be good this season so did i we'll see what happened we'll see what happens moving forward uh someone asked a question are there um are there enough good wins left on the schedule i'm assuming to get into the tournament sure and he's just gonna have to win like a lot of those games and i'm a little concerned about that um, especially given what we've seen tonight uh, and the rest of the season. Um, yeah, maybe Xavier Johnson should transfer to the University of Washington to probably play every game and compete for National Player of the Year. Um, not not with Mike Hopkins coaching him, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know, is Ron McFall. I don't know exactly what Walker brings, but it seems like he's in our most effective lineups. It, I Look, you know, the Woodson had a comment about Walker the other day, something like, you know, he kind of lost his way at Miami and they've kind of found him here. And he's been, you know, I, I'm, I follow Miami basketball. Indiana is by far my favorite team, but I taught at Miami uh, before I came back to IU. I, I was really puzzled by the Anthony Walker pickup. Anthony Walker so far this season, his offensive rating is 116. That's nuts. Like his, he, he never broke a point per possession at Miami. Um, and so, you know, he's, he's absolutely the energy and the, the, he looks to score and, and a lot of IU players don't seem to do that. Um, style points matter. IU keeps playing down to lesser competition, even though they keep squeaking out wins. Yeah. I mean, true. Um, but they, they, it, you know, we talked about it at the beginning. Um, let's see. This feels like such an Archie Miller game. Ugh, it does. You're right. It's, it's just got one of those. You know, you, you hope Indiana wins, um, but it does feel absolutely like that. Which team, which game is closer to the real IU team, Kansas or tonight? It's probably tonight, just being honest. Um, I mean, it's 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 one of those games. I, I just think it's one of those teams that will 
they will play up. They'll probably play real well against Purdue. They'll probably play real well uh, if they play another like highly ranked uh, opponent in the Big Ten. Um, but it absolutely feels like this is more in the range of what they're doing. All right, what are we going to do on this offensive possession? Trey got in there, got nowhere to go. Oh, nice kick out. Oh, wide open. Oh! Where has that been? Wow, a lead. Okay, Trey Galloway, back from the dead. 14 points in this game. Indiana's hit three threes for the game now. <laughs> um, all right, D up, another open three. God, oh, man. That, Morehead State is now 10 for 33 and a foul. That's that's huge. How, is that, what, seven, eight fouls? That's 23 fouls for the game. <laughs> yes, Bruce, what did I do with my hands? You saw, I had no idea what to do with my hands. Um, yeah, Dr. Hoosier, a, a, a kick out. I, I didn't think it was legal. I didn't think it was legal either. Um, James says, overcoming a 15-point deficit and winning will be more beneficial than winning by 15 in a breeze. You might be right on that. I'm, I, you, it, it, probably not more beneficial from the, uh, the metrics perspective, but screw the metrics. Who cares? Um, might help the team from a mental perspective. Cups, free throw good? Yep. All right. I like it. My, do my dogs are, speaking of speaking of people that make fun of me or don't like it when I watch basketball games, my dogs, my golden retrievers, hate when I watch sports. They hate when I watch sports. They, they're, the nervous energy is just all over the building. All right. Come on, Cups. Hit this. Ugh. Oh, good offensive rebound. All right. Oh, this is nervy. All right, what does Indiana do here? All right, come on. What is this? What? what? Uh, Trey feeling it. Ugh, nope. Damn, that was big. Ah, uh, that was a that was not a good offensive possession. That's the shot you end up with. All right, D up. Took away the Al oh, Walker. Yeah, that, that was just a really good shot. That's a really good layup by Thomas. Um, I mean, that was a tough angle. Walker could have done better on it, but I mean, he went he went over Renew and off glass. All right, what does Indiana do there? Here's Walker hunting again, and that was a block. No, a foul. Oh, and I, what? Oh, that was on. I, oh, I was on Thomas, wasn't it? Yep, okay, so that's Thomas's fifth foul. So that's two of their players that have fouled out, and we're going to get more Anthony Walker at the free throw line. <laughs> I wish this had more than water in it right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is interesting. Yeah, I was, I was, I was noticing this. Uh, Lathan, who's got 30 points, hasn't taken a shot uh, since the 949 mark. Yeah, that's that, that's clearly a foul. Wow, okay. Um, all right. So Walker. See what he can do from the free throw line here. Walker's still the leading scorer. Indiana is, uh, what? Four, 13 of 22 from the free throw line, which is not ideal. Um, Let's see. All right. Made the first one. Good. Good, 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 good. I really appreciate all you folks for tuning in throughout the course of this. I had no idea how this was going to go. Um, and, well, we uh, we wanted drama on the first Crimson Cast Live. I guess we got it. All right. Two free throws in. Nice job, Anthony Walker. Walker's got 18 points and nine rebounds. He's seven for 11 from the field. I just, that's, that, I mean... What a performance. What a performance by Anthony Walker. All right. Big defensive possession here. Big defensive possession. Good good perimeter D by... That's good D. Ah, that was bad. Nice nice help by Galloway. He got stretched out. Another three. Nope. Good rebound, Gabe Cups. That was, a, that was really good positioning there by Cups. That was good, good recovery defense there by Indiana. That was... They're living on the, the danger zone there with that 
three-point line, but all right. God, basket here would be immense. All right, Mumbaco, that's nice. I like, okay, good. Another foul. All right. So Mbako to the line, I guess. Is this a shooting foul? Ugh. Ugh. Shelly Judd asks, why is Ware not in? Frankly, because the team's been more effective without him here down the stretch, Shelly. It's an interesting question, but I, I think what Indiana needs right now, Ware may not be the best person to provide it. All right. 20 to 2 scoring run. Wow. All right, Indiana. It's good, pretty good D by Cups. Be careful, Malik. Ah, it's a nice play by Miles there. Jeez. All right, what's Indiana going to do? 40, 42 seconds, 41. Okay, they're going to call time. You can go two for one here, I guess. Um, And obviously, if you can get to the free throw line, you get two free throws instead of one. Um, dude, this has been great. Now, all of us don't have folks to watch and chat with. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're joining us. I really am. We'll do this again. This was fun. This is fun. Yeah, Kenji's like doing every game. I'll try. I'll try. I appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor Hoosier. Th I, uh, I think I've, I think I've got the. Uh, I don't have the tickets for uh, for Thursday, but um, it is my anniversary night, so I will not be doing it then. Um, but uh, we'll do it again soon. I promise. Um, but Travis, before the game ends, my mood changes. I want to say this has been fun. It's been, I really enjoyed it. You guys have been great. This has been an awesome chat. Um, let's talk. Okay. Let's talk about the game here. Yeah. You have to go two for one. Can't let them get the last shot. I a hundred percent agree. I, I think you need, this is where Indiana needs to be smart, but decisive. And um, thank you, Scott. Um, it's, I think it's really critical that Indiana um, try to get themselves into a position where they make – Morehead State make a decision about what they're going to do. Morehead State's committed 25 fouls so far in this game. Um, the guys on the floor right now, uh, Renew's 0 for 1 from the free throw line, Galloway's 0 for 2, and Baco's 7 for 8, Walker's 3 for 5, and Cups is 1 for 3. Indiana's only shooting 16 for 26 from the free throw line so far in the game, which is 61.5%. That's not going to get it done. Um, Alex said, I think the calls went our way um, for most of the second half. They kind of did, but I think that part of the reason for that is when Indiana, in this last 12 minutes, or 10 minutes really, Indiana really forced the action. All right, what? okay, inbound pass. What is Indiana going to do here? Okay, Galloway. What are you doing, Trey? Where are you going? What is no Trey? What are you doing? Okay, nice kick. Okay, Mbako. Come on, hit it. No. Nope. And renew. Got oh, what a rebound. Oh, and a foul. Okay. Okay. Is that on who was that on? Was that on Miles? It was on Minix. All right. Um well, that was a really good rebound, my renew. Yeah, that was that was really nicely done, and a nice job to get the to get the ball up there. Um, Malik has struggled from the free throw line so far this season. Only sixty nine percent coming into the game. Got to hit these. Well. Okay. I'm going to call time out here if I'm Moorhead State. Do they have any left? They got one left. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not calling time out. What is all this crap going on at the free throw line? Like, why are they Why are they allowed to do that? Why are they allowed to do that? All right, Malik. Come on. 
Knock this one in at least. Oh God. Ah. Wow. Well, that wasn't good. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, no, uh, nothing easy, I guess, here for Indiana. Well, all right. Defensively, um, okay. Apparently, apparently, according to E. Stevens, the, the claim was that a guy lost his contact. I, I, I mean, I don't know why you get to go stand over the free throw line. Um, I'm looking for a contact lens when a guy's shooting free throws. Um, all right. Well, let's see. 24 seconds left. Um, you've got Lathan, who scored 30 points, but I think last scored at like the nine minute mark, nine and a half minute mark. Um, Miles has shot well recently. Um, and I think Minix scored. Uh, but Indiana, I mean, on the one hand, Morehead State's two for their last 12 from the field. On the other hand, Indiana hasn't hit a shot in three minutes. Um, Morehead State is eight for 11 from the free throw line today. So all the people that are out there saying foul, um, I'd rather take my chances with their shooting. They're 72% from the field. They're 39% or excuse me, they're 72% from the free throw line. They're 39% from the field. Statistically, Indiana's better off if they make Moorhead State shoot. Um, now, what was Moorhead State going to do here? They have, they've kind of thrived on this drive and kick game. And they haven't really hit a lot of those kicks lately. Now, this is where having another guard that could defend like really do heavy ball pressure defending. See, this is where I would stick a big on the inbound and have cups kind of play center field. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is nervy. Jeez, okay. All right, so clear out here for Lathan. Whoa, whoa, almost... Almost lost it. Lathan keeps waving him off. Five seconds. Come on. D up. Oh, he, that's a shove off. No. Blocked. Oh. 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 Wow. I can't believe it. Wow. That was the dumbest offensive possession Moorhead State could have run there. Congr Thank you, Moorhead State. Wow. Uh, well, that was a huge, huge, huge play by Malik there on that to block that. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, all the comments came out at once. Uh, I mean, let's see this. First of all, that's that's an offensive foul. They're not going to call it, but it's an offensive foul. But that is great presence of mind by Malik to get out there, block that. And, I mean... For him to miss those two free throws and then come back and do that, he deserves a lot of credit. Um, all right. Assembly Call has the post-game show. Go watch Assembly Call. Thanks to all of you for joining this. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We'll do it again at some point soon. Uh, Hoosiers win 69-68, just like we drew it up, right? Uh, thank you all again. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us and uh, bring back the bison, I guess. We'll catch you on the